Hi, this is PD at Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com, and today we're going to start working on our item system. Now, we originally planned to work on our character, you know, get him to start moving around so we could put him in the town and check out where everything was placed in our town. But after the live shows that we've had, we've got quite a bit of our item system and our spells and inventory system already planned out. And I don't want to fall too far behind on the live shows, so I'm going to take what we've already got planned out and turn those into scripts. It shouldn't be too bad because we've already done all the planning, so we just have to make the scripts. So let's open up Unity and Mono Development. And in Unity, I'm going to create another folder. And I'll just call this folder, uh, let's just say Items. And this is where I'm going to place all of my item scripts. So I'll create a new C Sharp script. And we'll just start off the furthest down the line, the base one. So item dot cs, and we'll open it up, Mono Development, and just change the name. Now we're not going to need to inherit from Mono Behavior, so we'll get rid of that. I'm just going to leave the two using statements for now. Uh, actually, we're not going to need those. Well, we'll leave the Unity Engine one just for debugging purposes. But we, we're not going to need it in the final version. So our item class had three basic properties. Its name, a value, and its rarity. So I'm going to create that rarity enumeration right now. So it's going to be public. It's going to be an enumeration. And I'll just call it rarity. And I'm just going to start off with three basic rarities. So there's going to be common, uncommon, and rare. Now you can put as many as you want. I'm just sticking with the three for now. Later on I can come back and just add more. So let's add these properties. So private, string, we have name, private, int, value, and a private rarity and I'll just say rarity in lowercase with an underscore because it's private. Now let's just go ahead and make our getters and setters for this right now. So public string name get and my setter. So when we go to get the name, all we're going to do is return name. And for our setter, all we're going to do is take the value that they pass in and assign it to name. Great. So let's do the same thing for value and rarity. Whoops, public. And this will be an integer. And we'll just say value. Set up our getter and setter. Then we'll return the value. And assign the value. And then our rarity. Now with the rarity it's a little bit different. We could either send back the name of the the, the string that's going to represent the rarity or we could send back an integer because all these names just represent an actual number. Uh, for now I'm just going to keep it as the rarity. I don't see a point in sending it uh, at int back right now because it just represents an int. But we'll just keep it this way. Now we're going to have to call it something different because we can't use rarity because that's the name of our our uh, enumeration. So I'll just say rare. And we'll say public. Oops, sorry, it's getter and setter. And 
and we'll return the rarity and assign the rarity actually I'm kind of a stickler for names I'm actually going to change this from rarity rarity to rarity types and that means I'll also have to change it here and up here but now I can call this rarity because when I call the item I just want to call its rarity it's going to be really easy to remember now the only thing left to do is to create a couple constructors for it so I'm just going to come down here create public item that'll be the default constructor and all we're going to do in here is assign default values for these uh, properties so we'll say name equals and I'm just going to say need name and for value I'm going to make it equal zero and for rarity I'm going to make that equal rarity types dot common. Now there's one other thing I've thought of since the uh, live stream and I want my items to be able to take damage and just wear after time and eventually break unless you get them fixed. So we're going to need some sort of durability. So I'm just going to add that in right now. So private durability oops it's an integer int underscore durability and we'll come down here it's actually going to need two values for it because we'll want to have the max durability and the min durability so I'm just going to say you know, current dur and private int max dur. And then down here we can just say current durability equals, and we're just going to start off by saying max durability. Then right above that, we'll have to make sure that we assign max durability a value. Uh, I'm just going to start off at, say, 50. And we'll create one more constructor, an overloaded constructor. So public item and this one's actually going to take in uh, values to assign. So we're going to have a string and I'm just going to say name lowercase. It's going to have a value which will be an int and we'll also have a rarity. So rarity types rare and we'll need a max durability which will be an int and we'll say max dir and also a current durability and then we'll just simply assign them the values that are passed in so I'm just going to go like this paste those in and just replace them with the variables so this one we just called name this was value, this was rare, this was max durability, and this will be cur durability. Now the main reason for this is when we load our character up out of the database, we'll want a, you know, a quick way to assign all the values at once. Now we could do it just by using all the getters and setters and just making several calls at once. But this way here we can just you know pump it all in at once. 
but we do need a setter and getter for our max durability and our current durability. So public will be an int max durability and get set return max durability and max whoops max durability is equal to the value passed in now I'm just going to cut and paste this one for current durability and we just got to change the max with cur There we go. So we've discussed what each one does. So you should be able to go through and put all your own comments into it. But that looks like it's pretty much it. Let's open up Unity, make sure there's no typing errors. None showing up. Okay, so that's it. I'll see you in the next video where we're going to work on our be buffing items class. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.